it's past September 5th, which means if you haven't registered for the FE yet, you're going to have to take the new one. It's good and bad, but don't worry. Whether you're in your senior year of college, or it's been years since you've gone to school, here's some information on the new FE and six tips on how to succeed. Okay, so overview of the new FE. The good thing is there's no general section. So if you're EE or IE, there's no statics, dynamics, fluids, thermal. There's a lot less of that, even none for some of them. You only have to focus on what you're actually studying, your own major. So that's a good thing. The next good thing is it's six hours long instead of eight hours. There's 110 questions total meaning you get three minutes per question. Whereas before, in the general section, you only got two minutes. You have a lot more time to do each question. The third good thing about it is that there's four times around the year that you can take the test. Each time is a two month window spread throughout the year. And you can register anytime you want. So you can take it whenever you want. And lastly, the reference book is an e-reference now. You don't have to spend $20 to buy a reference book just to practice for the test. The only bad thing about the new FE is that registering for the test now costs double. Whereas before it cost 125 and now cost 250, but what are you gonna do? All right, on to the tips. The FE is gonna be releasing new material in November to help prepare for the test, but I've been studying off of this one, so I'm gonna base it off of this book. It should be useful when the new material comes around. Tip one, read each chapter thoroughly before you can try and do the problems. I know you want to look at the problems and try to solve right away and be quick and efficient, don't. If the material is fresh in your head and you're still in college, then fine, do it. But if it's been a while since you studied, you probably want to read the chapter thoroughly. Reading the chapter before doing the problem helps you get a firm grasp of the problems. Everything you need to know to solve the problems is in that chapter, so read it thoroughly. There's a few sample problems in the beginning of the, of the chapter. Um, I might say after a few problems, you might want to not look at anything else. Don't look at the chapter beforehand. Um, just look at the reference manual to solve the problems. And if you're really struggling with it, like say it takes about 25 or 30 minutes to, to solve the problem, you might want to peek at the solution just a bit just to get it going. But after that, try not to peek. Tip number two. Start your entire studying with math. Start with math. Trust me. Every chapter ahead, fluids, dynamics, statics, you might be get, might get really excited and dive into it and want to solve it right away. But I suggest you look at math first because all the calculus, um, algebra, derivatives, you need to get a firm grasp of that before you do the hard engineering problems, which is based off of that. Tip number three. Like I mentioned before, while you're studying for the test or the problems, try not to look anywhere else for help. Try to really struggle with each problem. Um, after doing a few practice problems, just do the rest on your own using just the reference book. Tip number four. There's a diagnostic test at the beginning of each section. When you're done learning all the chapters for each section, at the end you can take the diagnostic test and time yourself to see how well you do when you're timed. It's easy to solve a problem when you have a lot of time left, but you, are, you really want to test how quick you are in solving the problems. Tip number five. After studying the math section, depending on your core subject, study your core subjects first. For example, I'm taking the ME section. After I study statics and dynamics to warm up, I'm going to dive straight into fluids and thermodynamics. This takes up about 30 to 40% of my test, so I want to tackle that first. It's more important to take care of the more important subjects and get it out of the way than to spend time on engineering economics or circuits when you're studying civil. Tip number six. This is more about how much time you should take preparing for the exam. I'd say about at least three to six months to prepare depending on your situation. Let's say you're working and you can only study about two chapters per week. There's about 40 to 45 chapters you have to study for to prepare for the test. 
But let's say you're working and because of that you know some of the material. So you only need about 32 to 36 chapters to study for. So let's say you study about two to three chapters per week. It could take you about 11 to 18 weeks to study for the test. That's roughly about four to five months to prepare. Now you want an extra one or two months to really review the test and do some practice problems. So if you haven't gone to school in a long time and you're working and not much of your work is related to the testing material, I'd say give about six months to prepare. If you're fast and you know some of the material already and you're freshly out of school, three months. Okay, and, and here's the obvious tips. Um, practice the exam with an improved calculator. If you didn't already know, this calculator isn't improved, this is. They're both just as good, just one of them doesn't graph. Use this to study for the test before the exam. It'll help you get familiar with it. Um, study with the e-reference, of course. At least now you don't have to buy it. Um, take it with you wherever you go and uh, study with it. Try not to use the book itself to study with. And lastly, review each chapter when you're done studying it. What I like to do is go back to the same chapter after a month or two and do some of the problems just to see if I remember it or not. And if I'm a little rusty, then just practice a little more. Remember, you only need about 60% of the past test, so don't sweat it. It doesn't have to be perfect, just be good at preparing. There's a CBT practice exam in November, so you should probably try and take advantage of it to prepare for the test. And finally, Remember, there's four windows throughout the year to take the test. You can register anytime. So if you're not quite ready yet or not in the mood to take the test, just wait another two months and you'll be able to take it. All right, well, that's all I have for this review. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time.